You know what? This flipping virus can do one. It can do one now. We've been put back in lockdown, haven't we? Well, my city has. And for the benefit of those who don't know, um, I live in Leicester, which is a large city in the middle of England. And basically, because of a surge in cases, we've been put back into strict lockdown. So all the non-essential shops are closed again. Pubs can't reopen this weekend. We're just kind of like this little pocket in the middle of England. Everybody else is going out and doing stuff and we can't. I'm not going to go into the reasons why because it's just, there's no point. You can read the newspapers, you can read the news, find it on YouTube, but it's really f***ing me off. I've got a cub on at the minute. Oh, you know, I was supposed to go fishing this weekend with my dad, now I can't because I'm stuck, stuck in Leicester. So I figured today I need some comfort food and that's going to be some bangers and mash or sausage mash sausage mash and onion gravy, whatever you want to call it, it's delicious all the same. Now if you're new here, please hit that subscribe button and also make sure you click the bell icon, allow all notifications, that way when I upload a new video, you get notified. Because honestly, it does help me out. You subscribing, you watching my videos, helps support this channel. But I'm watching you, yes, you with your ad block. But anyway, let's crack on, get your face down here and have a look at my sausage. Right, let's talk about sausage. I'm not gonna go into great lengths, but the simple rule is buy good sausages. Don't go out to the supermarket and buy the cheapest, naffest ones you can find, because you're gonna end up with a cheap naff dish at the end of it. You want a nice meaty sausage of about 95% upwards of pork, and if you can, visit your local butcher, you know? Especially right now. The supermarkets are doing just fine, but it's our local independent places that really need the support right now. So if you can visit a butcher, go ahead and do it. So what I'm gonna do now is take the sausages, and we're gonna brown them off. Right, okay, so what we're gonna do is brown off these sausages. First thing I'm gonna do is get this pan on, I'd say about medium high. Then to that, I'm gonna add a bit of vegetable oil. Is it vegetable? No. This is olive pomace oil blend. Idiot, man. Read labels. That would be really clever, wouldn't it? Now, as the pan's warming up, we're gonna go in and add the sausages. So I'm gonna fry these for about one to two minutes on a medium heat get some nice golden colour on all sides, and then I'll put them to one side, and we can move on to the next step. So we've browned them off, leave them to one side, because we're gonna finish the cooking in the onion gravy itself. Now, whatever you do, don't throw this pan away. All of that stuff in there is goodness, all right? We're gonna use that to make our onion gravy, which we need to crack on and do because it's nearly dinner time and I'm starving. Right, okay, so we need to get on and make the onion gravy. So I'm going to use two medium-sized onions. I know it seems like quite a lot, but you've gotta remember that onions contain a lot of water. So it might look like a lot to begin with, but it's really gonna kind of concentrate and shrink down. So all I'm gonna do is just Peel these onions up. Okay, and once I've peeled them, I'm just gonna slice them in half. And then all I'm gonna do is just finely slice them. You want slices really because you don't want tiny little bits of nonsense. You actually wanna sort of know that you're eating onion. Okay, so the onions are sliced up. We've got our pan from earlier that we browned off the sausages in. There's still plenty of oil in there, so I don't need to add any more. What I'm gonna do is put that onto a very low heat. Well, sort of low medium low, but you want it fairly low and I'll explain why. So we're gonna add the sliced onions. Got my trusty wooden spoon here. Very stained with turmeric actually. I've made a lot of curries recently, but I'm just gonna kind of start to break those up. And what we want to achieve here is really nice, soft, caramelized onions. And that takes time. You cannot rush this step. The amount of times I've seen people make an onion gravy and they try to rush it, and what you end up with is semi-raw onion that's kind of got these charred out of black bits that you'd normally see in a cheap cheeseburger down at the car boot. We don't want that. What we need to do is to do this slowly, 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 slowly. It's gonna take about 30 to 40 minutes for them to really go nice and soft. You know, just stir them every five minutes or so. You just wanna hear like a gentle sizzle, right? Nice and gently. You know, if you want good food, you've gotta put in the effort. Sometimes it's not a case of, running around, doing frantic chopping, thousands of ingredients. It's just time. Just take your time, don't rush it. So I'm gonna lovingly tend to these onions for about 40 minutes, but by the power of video editing, that'll be about half a second for you. Okay, so after about 40 minutes, this is what I'm talking about. Now those are what you call caramelized onions, okay? They're not burnt, they're just nice and golden and sticky. So what I'm gonna do now is for the last sort of five minutes or so, I'm gonna add about a teaspoon teaspoon and a half of sugar. And I'm just gonna let those continue cooking out. That sugar dissolves. 
and it's just going to really enhance the sweetness. And whilst it's doing that, we need to get the spuds on, ready for the mash. Okay, for the mashed potato then, very, very simple. In fact, I've got a video up showing you how to make mash three different ways. I'll put the link up for that as well. But I'm just gonna run through how I make my mashed potato. I've got about 450 grams of potatoes here. That is plenty for two people. Uh, and I'm just gonna peel them. And once I've peeled them, I'm just gonna cut them into smallish chunks, just so they cook faster. You know, sort of that sort of size. And once they're chopped, I'm just gonna get them into a pan. Like that. And then I'm going to fill this up with cold water. And what I've done is put it on the largest hob and I'm going to bring that water to a boil and a good pinch of salt. And once I've brought this water to the boil, I'm going to move it to the back hob to continue cooking whilst we get on and finish making the onion gravy. See, British food gets a bad rap, doesn't it? Everyone has little digs at us, don't they? Just sort of, Ugh, your food's rubbish, Ugh, it's bland, Ugh, it's beige. It's actually very good. Our food is good. It's simple, okay, and it's not gonna win any beauty prizes, that's for sure, but our food is good stuff. And anyone that disagrees can shove a banger right up their backside. Why is it called a banger? Why is it bangers and mash? Let's find out. Hey Google, why is it called bangers and mash? According to Britannica, the term bangers supposedly originated during World War I, when meat shortages resulted in sausages being made with a number of fillers, notably water, that caused them to explode when cooked. Well, thanks for clearing that up. We learn something new every day. Right, so the potatoes are continuing to cook at the back. They're going to take about 10, maybe 15 minutes to cook. We need to crack on and get this onion gravy going. So, I'm going to get that back onto a heat. And then to that, I'm going to add about a tablespoon of butter. Get that in. And I'm just going to let that melt down for a second. And then I'm going to add about a tablespoon of plain flour. And like you've seen me do many times before, we need to cook out that flour. It's going to get rid of the graininess and you don't want that flour taste in your gravy. It's going to take about a minute or so. And once you've cooked the flour out, we can start adding the stock. I've got my beef stock here, which we'll talk about in a second. Just a little bit at a time. Again, like you were making a sort of bechamel sauce, you wanna add it in stages. Don't add it all at once, because you're gonna get lumps. Now, there are so many different stocks out there, and whatever stock you use is gonna change the flavor of your gravy dramatically. For reference, I used this one. Nor Beef Stock Jelly Pots. And this is the rich beef variety. I'm obsessed with Nor Stocks, okay? I'm not sponsored by them, all right? They don't give me any money, but if they're watching, they should be, right? Send the check, send the check. Really, honestly, I've got these in my cupboard. Got some lamb ones there, got some vegetable ones as well. The jelly pots are just fantastic, okay? If you haven't got time to make your own stock, these are really good. Add a touch more. Now for me personally, I don't like my gravy really, really thick, okay? I like it quite semi-runny, sort of in between thick and runny. Okay, and the rest of it, in we go. Now it looks quite runny now, but trust me, it is gonna reduce down. I'm also gonna add some fresh thyme. What I'm gonna do is just pinch the little leaves off, and you're gonna want about a couple of sprigs worth. It will equate to around about a teaspoon's worth of thyme. Next, I'm gonna add some Worcester sauce. This is just gonna give it a really nice acidic kick. Uh, I'm gonna go in with about four teaspoons, because I really like it. So what I'm gonna do is just leave that to cook, probably for another five, 10 minutes, just to reduce a bit more and then we'll put the sausages in. Right, okay, so our onion gravy has reduced a little bit more. And what I'm gonna do is just season it with some salt and pepper. A bit of pepper in there. And I'm just gonna quickly taste it first because depending on the stock you use, depends on how much salt you need. So I'm just gonna taste it for salt. Only needs a pinch, I think. Pinch will be fine. And what we're gonna do is pop the sausages back in that we browned off earlier and they'll finish cooking in that gravy. So they're gonna add their flavor to it as well. And just on a gentle simmer, just cook those sausages out. They're gonna take probably 10 minutes to finish off. Potatoes are almost done. We're gonna get the peas on the go. So we'll leave them to do their thing now. And when we're nearly ready, we can finish the mash off and flip and well eat. Right, okay, the sausages are pretty much ready. Now we need to make the mash. So what I've got here is a potato ricer. You can use just a traditional masher if you've got it. But I like these because you end up with a really smooth mash. And all you do is just plop your potatoes 
a few at a time into the ricer and then all you do is just take the handle press it down and out comes mash they're really inexpensive I'll put a link down in the description below where you can buy one and they just make life a bit easier because you haven't got to stand over a bin mashing potato by hand for ages and it turns out really smooth every single time okay and to the mash I'm going to add a couple of tablespoons of butter I like quite a lot of butter in my mash because it just adds a really nice flavour. Start mixing that through. I'm also going to add some white pepper. For some reason it just works very well with potato. You can use black if you want, it's entirely up to you. Again, just work that through, work that butter until it melts. Okay, once the butter is melted, I'm just going to add a splash of milk. Not too much, just to kind of loosen it a touch. Probably a couple of tablespoons at most. Okay, just kind of loosens it up, stops it being a bit too sticky and at this stage you can mix it up you know you can put some mustard in there cheddar cheese add some chives spring onions whatever you like okay so let's give it a quick taste for seasoning definitely needs salt needs quite a bit of salt i think okay there we go so the peas are boiling now they're ready to go mash is ready sausages are cooked we can assemble this and eat it i saw wendy's where y'all from Live free, live free, speak your peace. Stay humble, stay humble in these streets, yeah. In these streets. Let's go. Playground parks with the trees and the cars. Brownstone buildings with the kids on the porch. Murals on the walls for the ones that we lost. Bodegas on the. Look at that. It's a thing of beauty, this. It's a thing of beauty. Just gotta tuck in. Bit of sausage. Bit of onion gravy, bit of mash. Let's go in. Shut up and kiss me. Honestly, it's one of the most comforting, delicious things you're ever going to eat. That gravy is sweet, savoury, got a bit of kick from the Worcester sauce. The mash is super creamy. And it's really important to use good sausages, all right? Don't scrimp on them, because it won't be half as good. And it really pays to make your own gravy, okay? Don't go out and buy some cheap packet stuff you're just gonna end up being disappointed. Make your own gravy and honestly, you'll have a cracking bangers and mash. I mean, it's a simple meal to knock up. Yes, the onions take time to caramelize and develop and get their natural sweetness out. But honestly, to assemble the dish itself is really, really simple. Kids will love it. It's a nice little family meal. And again, you can scale this up. I mean, I recommend about three sausages per adult maybe two, maybe one for a child, but you can scale it up to make it for more people. But I'm gonna wrap up this video by saying thank you for watching. And of course, leave a comment down below. Let's talk about this bangs and mash. And as always, I'll see your gorgeous faces in the next video and bye for now.